Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In the previous video, we learned about the caching in WordPress, so different types of caching. We also spoke about how caching works. We spoke about the browser cache, site cache, which is page cache, and also object caching. So now we will talk in depth about the object caching. So first of all, let's try to understand why do we need object caching? Well, every time a page loads the content, it sends one or often several database queries. If you use object caching, then the data is stored in the cache and it's ready to be displayed on the page in the flashes of flashes. So as I explained to you in the previous video that database queries are expensive and of course it will take some time to get that data from the database making that query but if it's there in cache then it can be in the flash of seconds so your database can be queried much less often and retrieving content from the cache is a lot faster than sending queries to the database this results in page loading times that are a lot faster your server resources are also used more efficiently now this is especially crucial factor if you're looking to scale your WordPress website when you have a large website and when you have like lakhs of posts. So at that point of time to scale your WordPress caching is really, really useful. If I had to give you a simple example to understand the object caching. So you can think of object caching as like a grocery shopping. Let's say you want to make an omelet every day, right? So imagine you have to go to the shop, get one egg, every day come back to home and then make the omelet again the next day you go to the shop get the egg come back home make the omelet. So it feels a little inefficient right because you have to go every day getting one egg right wouldn't it be easier to just get dozens of egg put that in the fridge and whenever you need it whenever you want to make your omelet or meal you can do that Right? So that's a lot faster because you've kind of saved those round trips, multiple round trips, because you're going to be doing same process over and over again. Right? So storing the acquired objects is like putting away the groceries in your house. Now, now, how do we describe the page cache in this scenario? Well, page cache is like making a meal from your cache items because a page is consistent of different small components. So one component may be requiring certain queries to WordPress uh, for certain piece of data. Another component may require a different query, right? So if you have those cached items like in small storage available, you, know, you can build that entire page cache using those small cache items. So it's like making the meal, you know, if you want to make an omelet, you would need onion, you would need salt, so you get everything, keep it in your fridge, and when you want to make your meal with, for example, an omelet, then you can just get all the information from your fridge rather than going to the shop and getting each of those items every single day. Okay, so building a page cache is just like making your meals from your cache items. As simple as that. So, so that's why, so especially for we as developers, it's, it's essential to understand how expensive these database queries can be and why caching is so important. So whenever you're building websites for your clients, uh, think about this making an omelet scenario, going back to the shop, going to the shop, getting the omelet every day, and you will realize that why caching is so important in WordPress. And then you will be able to relate to your web application development that why caching is really, really important. So now that we understand why we need object caching, uh, let's discuss object caching a bit further. So as I explained to you in the previous videos that object caching is type of server side caching, unlike your browser caching and the page caching. This means caching is administered at the server level. Object caching stores database query results that have been loaded and then it serves up faster the next time they requested. Okay, now that we understand why object caching, in the next video, we're going to talk about how caching works in WordPress. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.